you come to surrender. Was it all worth it? Obviously. All your work to bring Sentinel back, and now clearly he has all the power. It's actually almost tragic. You dare lecture me, slave? Your Decepticons finally conquering this planet, and yet their leader won't be you. It will be me. It will always be me. In any minute now, you'll be nothing but Sentinel's bitch. <laughs> For the record, I helped uh, a close friend ace a university course about gangster rap too. So, you know, it may not seem like it because I'm because I'm so the way I am, <laughs> but uh, I know what I'm talking about. I like uh, I like that there's a university course about gangster rap. First of all, I think you buried the lead on that one. Um, yeah, pretty pretty hard to come back from that. Yeah, what are they? Uh, well, anyway, we can talk about that another time. Uh, you know, it might not have been it might not have been an entire course, but I'll figure it out for you. It was well, a, either it was way, a, like a week. Rock, you know, yeah, like a duty assignment, and uh, yeah, it was difficult. And I uh, I pulled out some tracks that put them at the leader of the pack. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> uh, yeah, because yeah, nothing 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 better than the real thing. These kids are. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, because these kids they also don't know about they also don't know about Transformers. Oh man, uh, neither like, is Michael like, Bay. Neither is Michael Bay. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, Transformers: Dark of the Moon, 2011. My goodness, it feels it was 10 years ago this goddamn movie came out. A lot of things are happening that way to me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And well, it it happens, man. Time keeps passing. I didn't even remember if Spike TV was a goddamn thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, by uh auteur uh Michael Bay who brought us uh Bad Boys, The Rock, Armageddon, Pearl Harbor, Bad Boys 2, The Island, and uh I guess I'd say 13 hours in there as well cuz that's uh, and I haven't seen Pain and Gain, so I I can't speak to Pain and Gain. This actually happened This would be the final um, in Shia LaBeouf installment, right? It is, yeah, yeah. This is this is the end of Shia LaBeouf's run. I'm pretty sure. Fuck, I hope that's true. Age of Extinction, yeah, because it's gonna it's gonna have uh, hunted down Optimus Prime and uh, Marky Mark. So this is yeah, this is this is a uh, fucking excellent Shia LaBeouf. Um, we got a writer, and I I made a point of thinking about the writer on this one, Ewan. Kruger, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but uh, they they had done Transformers three, but they just kind of like got kind of brought in at the last minute. To, or wait, two Revenge of the Fallen. What are the so, fucking? This is the third movie, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's the third movie. Yeah, so they got brought in to like work on the second movie for a little bit, and then Michael Bay, I guess, kind of liked them, and then they did the third, and then they wrote the fourth. Um, so. So they're kind of a collaboration, little collaborator here. Um, yeah, which is. Um, I think it's good. I think this is a. I think this is a step up. I remember the first and second movies kind of being, not so great. You know, it's it's been a while since I've seen them, but I I don't remember liking them. But I like this movie, and so I can only attribute that to the writer. It has to be because this is and and the way they like. Um, what's that word you guys always use? Anyway, the way they use the old uh, moon landing stuff, but like sort of amalgamated it into the, sort of brought it forward with like sneaky tricks and then added the Transformers into it to make them like a conspiracy that have been here all along, you know? Really get the Yeah. Words. Yeah. Oh, is there? Yep. I'm okay. Still there. Oh, it seemed as if you had faded off for a moment there. Sorry. Um, yeah. <laughs> but you can't talk about the good yeah no and that's it's it's interesting it's like it um i don't know if it raises the stakes but i think one of the things that this movie definitely does like this is um and probably the first and second movie are propaganda movies as well but this movie's a this is a prop like a proper propaganda movie um in in that but and also like a right-wing paranoid fantasy scenario you know, like there is a conspiracy and it does involve NASA and it does involve Kennedy and Nixon, but it's the Decepticons, you know, and it like it's the. Um, and then and then once you eliminate all that stuff, 
aka space Jews, um, then well, you know, then then freedom well, then freedom <laughs> reigns, right? But I like no. that's I, I don't know, or at the very least, you know, like space Nazis, you know, I don't I know I know that's like, um, I it's it seems silly to think that those two are uh, synonymous, but within a certain imaginative imagine uh, like in a certain within a certain imagination, those two are synonymous. Uh, you know, they're just as bad as one another, which is, that's, that's a fucked up place to be. But that's Welcome awesome. to Michael Bay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, um, I, I, I like the idea of laser beak, uh, teaming with evil humans to assassinate people all along. Like every assassination was laser beak. Yeah. And like, transforming into this pink robot that has tea with your daughter uh and, you know and then <laughs> and like <laughs> yeah that was a bad jolt yeah um so uh, like right off right off the bat i just want to say that like i i love so i don't i don't like the marvel movies and stuff right i don't i don't care for most of the franchise action adventure drama scenarios but i i at, at the at the very least from this movie onward I'm, I'm happy to explore the older ones. Um, I like this franchise, you know, like it, it, it is the equivalent and, and it's probably fitting cause I really like Zack Snyder and, and uh, actually this movie shares a cinematographer with man of steel. And I, and I can't help but think that that makes sense in my brain as well. Well, well I'll, uh, you, I'll say this, there, there yeah. are some, there are some power shots. Like he shot some scenes that, cannot be duplicated <laughs> that 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 like are once in a lifetime in cinema like and, and, and that's perfectly fair to say yeah like uh there there there's things that he can do and there's power things that he does with this budget and i mean there's no like he's the tits uh in terms of like just like action explosion adventure and like cartoon action explosion adventure, because like we were talking about this, we were talking about like this is, it's not a funny movie. I don't think I really laughed. Uh, but no, I'm, it's pretty funny. I'm, I'm well, I'm charmed. You know, I'm smiling while I'm watching it. You know, like especially Sam Witwicky's Shia LaBeouf's parents. Uh, oh, they're fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. When Kevin Dunn shows up, I'm like, oh, that's fucking amazing. Um. And and the movies, it's funny. It's like, it's like, Shy's parents aren't like they practically aren't real. They're like, they're like these. It's like another realm. It 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 it's like he uh like Lion the Witch in the Wardrobe. You know, when he goes to see his parents or he interacts with his parents, it's like the world is isn't in any danger whatsoever. He's not dealing with the Autobots. He's just like some guy dealing with his fucking hilarious parents. It's true. Uh, it, it almost like a fucking like the Flintstones or something. Like he yeah. comes downstairs from his apartment. He's ready for a job interview. His car sucks shit. He's mm-hmm. he's barely clinging onto his gorgeous girlfriend. He's in a fucking panic <laughs> mode and he goes down into an alleyway and they step out in those fucking green jumpsuits like right out of the Simpsons. They got a Winnebago in a back alley. It's impossible to even get that fucking thing into New York. And <laughs> and he's just like Jesus Christ and he just starts fucking like. Like he he starts like shuddering and just sort of backing back into the alleyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's a perfect moment. Yeah, yeah. And they're like they're driving him around to his job interviews and stuff. And and actually the job <laughs> interviews are hilarious when he's like, you know. But they're also like, I don't. So this movie, uh, I'll like I've already said it. Like it's it's super propagandistic. I think it's. I think I think they're kind of super dangerous, you know, like they're very, um, very people call them patriotic, but I don't even think that quite captures it. Like it it has it it feels very comfortable making fun of Asian Americans. Uh, very it, comfortable. It, oh, yeah. Oh, I <laughs> yeah. mean, deep wang. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And even when he goes in that job interview and he's just like, Mr. Max, you know, you you look like an Asian Colonel Sanders, a man I can trust. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you're like, and that's a, that's a fucking funny line. That's hilarious. But then I'm I'm just like Jesus, like why, you know, I don't. There there seems to be a preoccupation where like Michael Bay or or the writer or whomever just seems to find that funny. 
Um, yeah, he's comfortable stereotyping everything. Oh, yeah. 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 I guess like that's he's, it. Com- he's comfortable yeah. of doing an analog of whatever. I'm going to make these two Transformers be like gangster rappers. I'm going to make the Italian fucking Ferrari Transformer be like a goddamn full blooded, like as if I if I pulled a fucking Italian kid off of a soccer field and threw him into a car. He, he, uh, prime, prime, uh, he, he you know, in a good mood right now. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> off. Like, are you serious? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah no, and I think yeah, that was no much worries, more, man. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I know it was I know it was really strong in this movie because like it's strong throughout all the movies. But I I I remember one of the things that really cringed me about the first two is like it felt more like Jar Jar Binks when they were doing it there. This movie, you know, it's obviously still happening, but it, I don't know. It's it seems less cringeworthy, but that that's certainly it's not just to excuse clean it. Racism now. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> no, it's just, the, uh, yeah, um, yeah, I don't know, fuck, where do you, where do you begin here? The, uh, I've, I've made so many notes. That, yeah, it's like a, it's like a fucking fever dream. These movies. Well, that's exactly it. Education, education, and also, you know, you were saying the whole things like, like propagandistic. It, it's also really comfortable. Just fucking toting the big dick of capitalism too, with that, with the Dempsey, with the fucking what's his name, McDreamy. Oh, Gold. Uh, yeah, yeah Patrick, Patrick Dempsey. Patrick Dempsey and his his car collection, and then Shia's girlfriend, and like, ah, she just got herself a good job, and now she's a fucking. Yeah, I'm actually, like, what? maybe there's a. There, I think there's a counter argument to that, though, in that he's the traitor, right? You know, like he's he's the accountant. He's fair. Yeah. Um, he is. The, he is the um, boy. He's he's the bad guy. So he's capitalism. Is, I guess they're yeah, yeah. I mean, evil. And Shia yeah, LaBeouf, the bum, is, uh, you know, well, he's just the, one. Uh, he's just that guy temp, that wants his mail car, room man. Temp. Yeah. Yeah. Just the little guy. Um, the, the politics of this movie are very strange. I don't I don't think they're very strange. I think they're very clearly coded, but I don't know what it it amounts to. Like it, I don't subject, know that it amounts to anything. I feel that it it does to an extent. Like I feel like I think at the end the you know we're, we're obviously we're jumping around, but I I think that the Autobots are very clearly associated um with a conception of one of America's self-conceptions as like this bastion of liberty and and freedom from oppression of any sort um and you know and and they go out of their way to you know put optimus prime in the same shot as george washington and his financiers uh, <laughs> interestingly enough i went and I, he's fighting under one of the the statues and i was like what is that statue i bet that means something but, uh, you know, some of the old um, individuals who, like, founded the American Republic. And then, you know, what does Megatron do at the Washington Monument? He fucking blows up um, Abraham Lincoln and, and sits on his throne or whatever. And, you know, and Abraham freed the slaves, you know, and all the the, the, the so there's there's something about the Decepticons, which are like Confederate. Um, you know, they're the losing side of America's Civil War, whereas the Autobots are that pure sort of um union uh americana and uh it's so funny the, how you can still do that but 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 edge right you know well I, yeah that's exactly it um because yeah he certainly well i don't I, at the very least well what is it about this movie that we would say that makes him ed i don't does he edge right like what what would we point to other than his yeah maybe not well, because uh, the movie's also about America's foreign policy, and you know it's not a mistake that the Autobots were fucking blowing up uh, Middle Eastern bases and shit like that. You know, like we got to make sure that the humans don't hurt themselves. Um, right, and right, basically, right. You know, and they also do the whole, uh, um, like they have the um, uh, event- eventually the humans like lose uh, faith in their. Uh, their immigrant friends and uh, start to like uh, work against them, right? Oh, it's true. Exile them. Yeah, yeah. Build a wall. Although, you know, I guess they do so under the orders of uh, 
Sentinel Prime and, and that sort of shit. But but yeah, um, I think it's just like, you know, Captain, not Captain America. It's funny. He's not Captain America, but he might as well be Optimus Prime <clears throat> at the end. You know, and it's like in any war, there will be calms before the storm days when we lose faith. Um, and our allies uh, are against us or something like that. But, you know, but we will never uh, forsake this planet or its people. You know, it's 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 America as, the, you know, it believes internally that it is a good, you know, it, it's just like we don't have slavery anymore. And we just have freedom. Capitalism's under control. And, uh, you know, we just need to make sure that the dirty Arabs don't ruin it. Um, or the communists, um, or, you know, because they associate the Decepticons with Russia as well, right? Yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah, like, it's it just, it you know, even Nixon is given a swelling speech in this movie. I, I thought that was so, like, the music behind him, and he's he's giving that phone call, and it's actual an actual moment from history, but it, it casts it in, you know, like, you're you're meant to sort of listen to it like a music video. And and you'd get those little tinglys in your arm, uh, is, you know, is what they're going for. And, you know, I'd like, I'm not going to say I got that, but I understood. I know that technique. Yeah. Well, I mean, it it was. Um, yeah. Well, the way they did it is just like. A, it was supposed to feel like that. And then Nixon's like, a, oh, he's a monster, but they they're they're romanticizing everything good about America throughout history. Well, yeah, but except for the fact that it's it was funny to me, and maybe this is the right word thing as well. Uh, Kennedy starts the conspiracy to get to the dark of the moon, um, you know, before the Russians do. You know, like that's he, he's the reason that the space program exists. Um, and you don't know because they if Nixon knew uh, whether or not, you know, because they said they're like only 35 people knew and Laserbeak's killing all of them. Uh, there's there's no implication that that Nixon knew about it. Um, I don't know. You know, again, I don't know what that amounts to, other than it's sort of a subversion of expectations. It it doesn't it doesn't negate Watergate uh, or or Nixon's abuses and stuff like that. But it um, well then they then well because in between all of this like very uh, deep dark uh, conspiracy work and flashbacks, I've got those little fucking. Autobots like humping his girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, uh, so and her first appearance. In. Her first appearance is very. So it's this movie. You know, these movies aren't just patriotic. They're you know like they're they're macho. Uh, they're you know because basically not macho. It's, like, like, it's like a car show. It's it's like an, it's, it's like everything yeah. Americana. It's, yeah. it's the like I'm 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 supposed to have a babe. I'm supposed to have a, an object like a purely objectified woman, beautiful yeah. woman, beautiful car. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's not really like contributing much other than that. Well, I shouldn't say that she kind of did. She was also the breadwinner in their relationship. So, I mean, like, oh, it's funny because actually, for, yeah. for, for, for every little step that they make where you're like, this is a misogynist movie. They'll do something that you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> no, and she turns the tide of the battle. Um, she's the one that talks to Megatron and and preys upon his masculinity. Uh, you, you'll be nothing more than Sentinel's bitch. Um, and that's what that's what inspires Megatron to to get into the fight and, and turn the tide. And that's ultimately why Prime wins. Um, you know, so she she has an agency. She has a role within the film. She's not just this thing that's screaming. Uh, but a lot of the time. She feels that way. Um, and and her her feminine agency is is never turned in any way masculine. Uh, it's just she she just operates within like, I don't know, some kind of passive feminist sphere and then understands how to manipulate men. Uh, you know, oh, you mean it works for a lot of people, probably. And yeah, well, it might it, it <laughs> might, you know. It's just it's just funny, though, like it's just the the show does not. Also, I wouldn't it, see how I wouldn't see how you could make her not feminine. It was a fairly yeah. powerful feminine. Force. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah Especially with Witwicky being like such a fucking like like a Mortimer. He's just this is the Witwicky thing is he's the everyman also, which I, I, I feel like is the charm 
I know you try and do it with Marky Mark, but Marky Mark's not the everyman. Witwicky is. Oh, he sure is. Yeah. Well, and they and they established that even though these like I'm this isn't an everyman thing at all. But like he gets the the medal from Obama and he sees, you know, he sees Carly, uh, his, his girlfriend, and she's serving in the White House at the time. And like he's all show off and stuff like that. And then like he but he leans on a on a coffee table or something like that. And it's glass and it breaks. And then they cut scene, you know, so like he's he's goofy and he's charming, but he's also a klutz. And, oh, you can just understand how your heart would melt for him. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, he's a fucking boob, but he's also yeah. like like I mean, like and then he's trying to justify, you know, his own existence because he, he is a fucking boob. Um, so yeah, well, he kind of like puts him in a place where he's trying to figure out, you know, who he is. I think I I think I largely agree with that. But at the same time, when he's he's just trying to find his way in a world that he can't just never turned him into the hero that he is. Um, and I actually I kind of want to rewind to the first moment that we see Carly. Uh, she's carrying like she's infantilized. She's turned into a little girl not wearing any pants. Um, and she's carrying this little like stuffed animal. And it's. It, you know, it really I think about what they used to say about Doctor Who, um, Doctor Who's companion would always be like this hot chick. And they would say, like, that's for the dads. Um, and and Carly in this movie is is for the dads. And so is Megan Fox. Um, it, it has that same quality. But in this, she's introduced as like this teenage fantasy, but she's also has a lot of money. Um, anyway, the. Uh, Oh shit! I kind of lost my train of thought on that one. Every man, that's right. Um, and when uh, so okay, there's that, um, and that's that's not necessarily every man, but that's just like trying to appeal to a certain, I don't know, male fantasy. So maybe every man. Sure. Um, yeah. 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 And then um, the, but once he knows that the Decepticons are involved. He trans he he transforms he transforms, um and and suddenly all that shit about him trying to get a job with Malkovich and the, which we got to talk about Malkovich. <laughs> oh Jesus! The, yeah, uh, all that shit about him, you know, being being sad like all that falls by the wayside and he fucking starts telling off special forces soldiers, and you know, like he actually gets into a fist fight with one of them and he's just like get a prime out you know he's just like oh this is a medical establishment oh where'd you get that hat nurse school uh and he's just like it's he's got all these like fucking quips he's so sharp <laughs> and and he's screaming he's like ah <laughs> and uh yeah and then bubblebee comes out and then all of a sudden you know like it's hero time uh but he's he's still kind of bumbling throughout because because the the security establishment doesn't accept him um but yeah like from that moment I guess there's the other time when he goes to see his parents a second time. I think that's the sort of recharge, bumbling recharge. But from then on, though, he's pretty fucking heroic. Yeah, he is. And I'm just uh, I was just rewatching this little scene when Optimus Prime returns. Oh, after um, after they think he's dead. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Anyway. The um, uh, Malkovich, the job interview. What did you think of the job interview? Well, it's just a, it's just a, it was a great. I don't even know if it's scripted. Um, if if it wasn't, it like didn't it's, really it's, look like it was. It was fucking insane. Yeah, it's just like uh, you're so you're a go getter, yeah. And he's like, yeah, I'm a killer. I'm a stone cold, you know. And just like Shia LaBeouf, he's funny. He's fucking Impress funny. Impress me. Yeah. Impress <laughs> me. me. Yeah. Uh, no, it's well, a, right it, now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was uh it was fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah, the um I also enjoyed that he after he got the job, sort of the whole like grind that they did there. That was fantastic. Um yeah. Malk- and then Malkovich fell into that strange role where he wanted to like play with the aliens. Yeah, fucking, like they just had, bizarre. He serves no purpose, but he's Bumblebee. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, <laughs> He, yeah, he doesn't do anything else for the movie. Like, he, he becomes completely extraneous, but he's John Malkovich, right? So just, like, put him on set. Yeah, so man, get him out there. He was fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Um, but they, they had a lot of actors like that. Yeah. yeah. They got Turturro and Francis McDormand. Um, that's, that was a great scene, too, when they went after the Russians. Uh Oh, actually, did you know... Wait, you mean in... Uh, Oh, you mean in the bar, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was, uh, before we talk about that, the guy who brought them to Chernobyl, he was in one of those sniper movies. He was that Russian guy. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. recognize him. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, that's cool. Good for him. You know, like, that guy's that guy's charming. Uh, he's got a good good eye for character actors. Anyway, um, who's the guy, who's John Turturro's fucking sidekick who's that guy what's that guy's name i i i didn't write it down um sorry one sec yeah i got everybody else written down here even deep wang it's uh dutch is that uh, okay yeah (laughs) he was i think i think he was actually kind of my least favorite um i like i like the things that he was doing he's a good sport but um, he seemed, you know, he was one of those, like Deep Wang, he was one of those extremely cartoonish humans. Um, yes, yeah, which is yeah. fine. Yeah, for this movie, you know, like, like, I think I was thinking of um, of Chris, you know, Chris's comment about, uh, you know, I was I was ragging him on a bit, I guess, about uh, Suicide Squad, and you know, he's like, yeah, there's nothing worse than a superhero movie that takes itself too seriously. And uh, now this movie kind of threads the line between not taking itself cons- uh, too seriously at all. It, it barely takes itself seriously. But at the same time, because it's a propaganda movie, full stop, it takes itself extremely seriously. And something about that tension I really like. Um, I don't want to, I don't want something to be too goofy and I don't want something to be too not serious. Um, yeah i know what you mean like i want to crack up i want things lightened um like i don't it's like fast and furious has this thing where it's like you've got really cool cars and explosions and action and this that and the other thing and then you've got this like really goofy family severity um like complex uh, that they do especially like and, I, and I'm, I'm sure it's for a certain fan group I, i'm more talking about the newer ones where mm-hmm. it's like they're, they're they're james bonding them with a severity that's just over the top and then just like and then vin diesel's carrying the film and and they're useless um there's just nothing i don't i don't I, and then either their attempts at comedy are bad uh, and, I, and I don't understand how you break out of that, but Michael Bay was able to. Well, yeah. I think in, mind you, these don't probably gross as much as the Fast and Furious ones, so maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. So. Oh no, no, this this grossed like a billion dollars, like 1.143 billion dollars. This movie grossed, um, like that's a awesome. disgusting, disgusting amount of money, and I like, and I, and that's why, um. You know, th- what, what What do I like about this movie? Why would I put down my money and, and join those one billion dollars worth of others is that I get my fucking jar of piss out of these movies. These movies have the jar of piss. Um, everybody's casually swearing. Like, how does Optimus Prime kill Sentinel Prime? He fucking rips out his goddamn spine and smashes his face on the ground, you know, and then like and. Um, no, actually, no, sorry that he shoots fucking Sentinel prime in the face after he rips out Megatron's spine and all throughout, there's just this, like they, the Autobots rip a person apart. Uh, they take them out of their plane and just like dismember them. Like it was a medieval, uh, spectacle of violence. And, you know, no one comments on it. No one's like, <laughs> like, it's just sort of happening. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You know, like Bumblebee's still a good guy, I guess. You know, Shia LaBeouf's fine. You know, it's war, man. It ain't war hell. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I I I like that. 
I don't I don't want to be talked down to. I don't want the Backstreet Boys, man. Give me give me fucking John Wayne. Give me something. You know, at, at least something I can latch on to. Yeah, and this is not this is not like a like a proper this isn't what Optimus Prime is supposed to be like. This is the, and and I think that's why you've got like what you described at the beginning as like a proper franchise. Is like it, this isn't the cartoon Optimus Prime. This isn't. It's not sugar coated. It's not really for kids. It's just this is his interpretation of it. This is his interpretation of the Transformers, and like people were into it enough for him to just continue to make a complete fucking franchise. And this is the that's the version you get is like a like a grittier Optimus Prime and a in a grittier story. And I think that actually that and that touches on another thing I like about this and and the reason I I kind of choose this before I would another of the products is that it you know it comes from this guy's fucking brain this weird guy's brain uh, you know, like different writers and cinematographers and stuff like that but ultimately like this hyperkinetic um, extremely bassy uh, disorienting elliptical loud um swirling mess um uh, which has at at the center of it like this this basic emotional core um and 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 fucking global stakes proper global stakes uh is is compelling to me um you know at the very least is entertaining to watch cuz cuz it's like I'm never going to get bored you cannot get bored at these movies there's always something happening it's just fucking pure cinema um, and I'm, I'm always going to appreciate that. I'll never think that these are fucking high art. Uh, although this movie is pretty good, but yeah, I mean like really like, but graphically and in terms of action shots, it sort of is, you know? <laughs> yeah. I think about when, when I think about the Marvel movies, I think about the next movie in the franchise age of extinction and, and Michael Bay literally has a giant, like gigantic fucking bony hand grab the earth and start tearing at it like fuck thanos fuck all that bullshit that's some goddamn monstrous cosmic calamity shit you know like it's it's so symbolic and it's so visceral um and it it just comes from the place you know comes from a place there's a there is some art and you know fine it's it's capitalism it's fucking probably terrible for the environment uh these movies are you know uh propagandizing a a sort of obsolete and and terrible way of life but yeah i don't know man you know it's fucking it's interesting yeah yeah where um i i kind of like to note a little bit on the scene where where did optimus get his powers from where he super powered himself wait what you mean at the end yeah no, I think he just uh, I think he just reached into the spirit of freedom and uh, oh. actually, he, yeah, I think he kind of actually <laughs> he's really funny at the end of this movie because he like there's a significant part of the end of this movie where he's on like he's trapped in some wires, like in some construction hook wires dangling upside down like a fucking boob for like 10 minutes. Um, Maybe it, it maybe it only felt like 10 minutes, but uh, I was just like, that's weird. You know, you brought him in as as this rescuing flying RoboCop hero. And then uh, you just get him like ensnared somewhere. And yeah. Yeah. And what then, do I know? Then, then he does come down and then he butchers uh, like 20 Decepticons and pulls shockwaves oh, yeah. eye out of his fucking socket. Yeah. And then he starts to go to work on Leonard Nimoy, <laughs> <laughs> which nice touch, by the way. Oh yeah, for the fans, for the fans. On two fronts. Well, that's uh, the just Star it, Wars, right? the Star, like, yeah, mean, the Star like, Trek front, front, and the yeah. You, you know, I know Transformers fans are like, uh, there's, I know, I know, because I'm a Transformers fan. That like, this is, this is a, it's, you know, it's a different, it's a different universe. Than, Very than we're used yeah. to, but but a little yeah. a little a little you know a little nod, a little Galvatron in the house, you know. 
Now because they do their own the space Galvatron later on or whatever, but they, mm. but they, but they give like he gives enough nods, you know, like he's mm. been over the material. Obviously, it's all fucking garbage cereal box material. So I mean, like he, he, it's a lot of it's unusable, but he gives nods where he can. I think that comes from the writer in in this instance. Um, I I know that Michael Bay has watched the original cartoon. Uh, he didn't grow up with it because he's he's older th- than we are um, a little bit. And I don't know. Well, yeah, well, for whatever, I guess he still could have grown up with the cartoon. But he um, anyway, he thinks it sucks. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Which is fair. So, yeah. Yeah. For what well, he's it, doing, a lot of it doesn't apply. Yeah. No, it really doesn't. Yeah. The, like if you can't if it doesn't have cars. Uh, <laughs> or people driving really fast or screaming or something like that. Yeah, it's it's not for him. Um, and he's trying to, like, even the aesthetic. I mean, I know a lot of people complain about the way his Transformers look. Mm-hmm. But, like, I, I, I know, obviously, I mean, there's, like, probably a bajillion people involved. Like, I'm sure he didn't just be like, this is my design. Like, I'm Michael Bay. Like, yeah, yeah. Obviously, there's, like, like a massive creative team and producers and so on and so forth. But I mean, um, I think a lot of that aesthetic was for the way the transformations would look to make them look semi-realistic to make the insides and moving parts and gears look like car parts. And, you know, it's, it was just an aesthetic choice. Um, And I think it's the literally the only thing that you could maybe have taken a little more of from the old cartoons. Actually, it's interesting. I was I was just reading an interview um, from, I guess, like 2007, 2008. And uh, they were talking they were talking about Optimus Prime. Uh, he was, you know, he apparently he was only 23 feet tall in the cartoon. I don't know how they fucking came to that decision. But uh, so Michael Bay had to make him 30 because he felt that the physics of it uh, for him to transport transform into a transport truck required that um you know and and like laserbeak doesn't turn into a cassette tape he can he turns into a printer or he turns into some modern art on the wall you know like they never shrink they they only transform into something that's their own biomass um and yeah that's that's an interesting choice like it 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 eliminates it does, I don't know. It certainly doesn't eliminate well, it fantasy, eliminates the goofy you know. thing like the yeah. uh, it, 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 it's it takes a little bit of the it takes a little bit of the the shoulder shrug out of it, you know, because like I'm not I'm not having I'm not having Optimus Prime's fucking trailer disappear into nothingness. Yeah. You, you know, like in the cartoon, like I'm I actually have like a he's using like a like a size base or like sort of a like a back alley physics to say okay like if this thing had transport truck parts it would be x size you know yeah. <laughs> that's that's yeah. a cool that's a good way to do it i would think it is it, yeah well it's probably the only way to to do it for for exactly the aesthetic he's going for like he wants it to be realistic and i i was thinking about um in listening to you i was thinking about the distinction between uh, Michael Bay and James Cameron, because I think there's a genealogy there, right? Like, I I don't think you have a a Michael Bay without a James Cameron, but, but the, one of the differences, there's a lot of differences, but one of the differences is that um, James Cameron actually designs his own environment. Uh, It, you know, it it comes from him in in a very deep way. Um, even if it's computer animated and stuff like that, like it's stuff that he's drawn. Whereas what I, I don't think that's the case with Michael Bay at all. I think you're right. I think like the hundreds of people that contribute to this movie are, are probably greater contributors than we realize. Um, he's yeah. He's I think more you of have a, to, you need, you yeah. need toy designers. You need, you need guys on the computer. And mm-hmm. then, and then if you, if you come up with like a simple thing, like, like you just described, like a, like I've got a guy animating on a computer. I want this transport truck to turn into a guy. I want it mm-hmm. to look cool, but I want you to use the same parts that are on the truck in the transformation. And I want to keep the, like the size frame the same so I can make it look like 
a truck turned into a guy. That's it, simple as that. And that's what, yeah. that's, that's where you come up with your differences. Like that's where it doesn't look like the little red fucking transport truck anymore. Yeah. And apparently they had 10,000 parts. Like Optimus Prime had 10,000 parts like that were animated throughout. And just like on the one hand, that feels like way too many parts. That's really overdoing it. But what do I know? Right. I, I didn't make a billion dollars the other year. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, hey, hey, it's true. Yeah. And the yeah. um the yeah, I, I, I know what you mean, though. I feel like Michael Bay is more of a Spielberg type. You know? He is. He is kind of a Spielberg. Yeah. Like I, I think it's. It's well, he's a he's a product of the generation before him, you know, like he's James Cameron plus Spielberg plus fucking I don't know, uh, George Lucas. Um, well, he knows he just like if you give him big money, he can make it big, man. That's yeah. that's it. He can make a big action movie. He, like he knows what the shots need to look like. He's a fucking I don't know, man. Like I hate to say it, but he's a kind of a visionary, like in terms of like action and yeah, I've I've even seen these. I've seen some cool uh, shots from the second movie. I think it was the uh, which one was that one? Revenge of the Fallen. Yeah, Revenge of the Fallen. They were they were um, they were with that uh, that SWAT team and they were hunting the Decepticons in that movie. Okay. Um, at the beginning, and um, I saw this scene where he like. He used these like explosions and like pyometrics to like pyro and stuff to send all these like big like steel piping like bouncing down a roadway and stuff. And um and then he, and then he obviously animates the transformer like transforming in the beginning that big one with two wheels that Optimus killed right out of the gates. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, like it, just seeing how he like did the shot for real and then built the animation in behind it. Like it's crazy. It's crazy. The money that, that you would need and the, and the know how you would need to like put that in frame and like execute that. Wouldn't even want to be involved the, in that. <laughs> the budget for this movie is insanely like not insanely low, but it's a hundred and I think it was 163 million. And I know that's a lot of money. Like I'm never going to see that money, but it doesn't sound like the amount of money it would cost to make this movie. No, it um, seems low. Yeah, but I, apparently that's the case, you know, and like one of the reasons he's in charge of the Transformers franchise and he doesn't get cut out is the dude is efficient. And, uh, you know, he's people think he's a dick. And but he himself is, is you know, he's just like, like, I, I can I can work 12 hours a day and get no one working overtime and I'll get the movie done. And I think I think that's part of him as well. Like he's a, he's just like this relentless uh money manager on top of all this shit uh and that's that's what allows him to to just fucking thrive in hollywood uh and he he makes money he just makes a bunch of fucking money and he makes these big things on budget on time and fucking rakes it in for everyone um i don't know you know like you, you don't hate the don't hate the player hate the game well yeah here so that's 2011 so in 2015 a few short years later the Avengers mm-hmm. movie came out. Okay. Cost two hundred and twenty million dollars USD. Oh. <laughs> with like basically Mostly as far uncast. as I'm concerned, a fraction of the Yeah, exactly. Mm. And, and and then gross three hundred and sixty five million. Oh, that's yeah, that's fucking weak baby yeah. sauce. That yeah. That's right. That's and those fucking movies baby are boring. shit energy. That's yeah, small and that's dick boring energy. as yeah, that's boring like, as fuck. Like those, like when the hordes come through the portal and stuff like that, fuck all that. Like this movie has has a great hordes through the portal moment when like everything fucking bursts out through the goddamn moon and comes through this this crystalline, you know, like projection and just starts ripping up Washington, D.C., throwing vehicles around, just slavering like all these Cthulhu monsters. I'm like, that's fucking great. Yeah, that feels like something, uh, you know, and, and with those Avengers movies, it just doesn't feel like I don't know what's coming through that gate. Just a bunch of fucking shit that the Hulk punches and that someone can shoot with an arrow or shoot with a blaster. Uh, well, they, you know, they have some like something that resembles punchy dialogue. Um, yeah. That's just it. And then this like this. Wow. I can't believe that fucking budget. And then one point one two four billion dollars. Yeah. Box office. Yeah. 
That's fucking, that's insane. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and he's just this roaming entity, you know, out the, there in the world, just, like, producing, like, you know, endless variety of the, varieties of these movies. Like, Armageddon, The Rock. You're know, like, you remember The Rock, man. When The Rock came out, man, that was all we fucking, like, we watched that over and over. That's it awesome kind of died movie. off at a certain point, but, yeah. That's, it's it's still a pretty cool movie. Yeah. I watched yeah. it not too long ago. Hmm. Yeah, so like, you know, like disagree. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I haven't. I honestly haven't seen it in so long. Uh, I just didn't have a comment on that. It's, it's, it's probably great. You know, I like the fella. I'm, I'm actually super curious. I'd love to. I'm probably gonna spend some more time now, um, uh, just sort of thinking about it, his tradition. But uh, I don't know. Do we, uh, do we have anything else on this fella? I don't know. I don't think so. I'm just checking out the last night. You know, Ooh, I don't. I feel that I've watched that. Ooh. I feel that I've watched it. But the, one thing about Michael Bay's movies, which is, you know, to some listeners is going to be a real knock against them, is that I don't always remember what happened after I see it. Like you, you can't. I can't tell you the plot. I in like uh, the only reason I was able to really like sort of capture this movie is because I've kind of seen it one and a half times. Uh, in in the last couple days um but i i kind of had to really because it's just so fast and it's just like and it gives you all the information you need to follow the action and to make the connections but it never gives you more time than that it only gives you enough to keep up and and brings it right to the end and then fucking and then cuts the movie off in the most awkward way possible um and yeah but that's just part of the style yeah, I mean that's how he moved from one to the next. I don't know. I don't really know that the stakes like he just leaves enough of enough sort of like hanging around, enough evil hanging around for him to just reboot it again and again. I think I think it really doesn't matter. You know, like it, I don't think the first movie I think the virtue of of these is that it also allows itself to ret, retcon itself because this movie's a retcon in that you know, uh, from the beginning, actually, Megatron had a plan and I was supposed to rendezvous with Sentinel Prime. And, you know, this, you know, the Kennedy thing and all that stuff and it was always happening in the background. And my previous attempts to, you know, to conquer the world were just like plan B and C. But that, actually, this is plan A. Um, and, you know, that that's good. You know, that's that's what you need. You know, that that it adds a serialized element to it and that's typical of comics you know like you're stuck with the past how do you make the past work for the future uh i, I think that's another reason this movie works so well uh, is because it, it does set up things for the future because movie number four builds off this movie pretty well but i can't remember number five at all yeah number five i don't think you want to remember that one seemed to I don't think it went sideways or anything. It's 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 still on brand, but um, it was very strange. Yeah, that's where Optimus goes evil and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they and they he decides to like throw back to uh, you know King Arthur times. Oh yes, yeah. That's always interesting. That and that's a funny thing about these movies too. Like that's a weird choice. Um, well, feel that's what I think you were sort of alluding to too. Is just that it's like a, it's like a cartoon fantasy. Like if I want to fucking bring Merlin and King Arthur into this, I goddamn well will. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. It's just like who's gonna stop me? <laughs> Got to do something. It's gonna have a natural feel. No worries at all. Yeah. yeah. Anthony, Anthony Hopkins, Hopkins will, show will narrate. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 oh, shit. Well, I mean, I'm giving the Dark of the Moon a good solid eight out of ten. It's a, oh, it's that's super classic. fair. Yeah, yeah, I think I'll join you there. I, I, I can't go up to. I, I, I would dip down. Michael. I would dip down to six and a half, seven for some of the other ones, for sure. Right. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but this one, this one's the, this one's the high water mark, I think, for the franchise. It might uh, be that. That's that's my feeling about it. Um. But uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I feel I feel that I'm gonna dip around. Age of Extinction, I think, actually has some really strong stuff as well. I think Age uh, of Extinction is very good. I think the loss of Shia LaBeouf uh, changes the 
the tone a little bit. I, yeah, yeah, I, I I can agree with that. Um, yeah, because it, like it, it transforms from a child to a father with with a child. Uh, that that's a totally different vibe. Um, yeah, 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 which is cool yeah. and fine, and and I think it worked. Also, yeah. But. yeah. Um, I'm gonna give Michael Bay a nine, and oh. I'm gonna give this. I'm gonna I'm gonna give this movie an eight. Um, cause, I like uh, that. Much. Yeah. Yeah. Because like I I can't tell if I like this movie more because I I kind of I'm really smitten with Michael Bay uh, or or but it's definitely solid you know anything that I produce pages and pages of notes about probably pretty good that's my I guess that's that's can't argue with that no can't argue with the the hard facts yeah like uh, like the fact that if you uh, Sign up for the vaccine passport. The pedophiles are going to know where your kids are at. Oh, fuck, that happens every goddamn time. <laughs> Does he, it doesn't even make sense. I hate this yeah. shit doesn't even make sense. Like, <laughs> I, I, wish it, I wish it had a through line, some of these conspiracies, and then I could be like, oh, you got me there. Yeah. Like, but no, it's always stupid. Yeah, it's always just like words. You know? Now, all we need is a little energon and a lot of luck. 